everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. You've made it. This is the final video in our machine alignment, calibration, and maintenance series. Our last step is ball screw compensation. Now this step you may not be able to perform because it requires a pretty expensive piece of equipment. We're going to do it the old school way, uh, just like all of our other calibrations that we did. Uh, we're not going to use any lasers or ball bars. Uh, what we are going to use is a, uh, a step gauge. Uh, basically, it's just a hunk of steel that has one inch increments ground into it, but they are ground uh, to a very, very tight precision. And we can use this as a gauge and transfer that gauge into our ball screw compensation table so then the positioning accuracy of our machine is improved based on the accuracy of this gauge. Uh, almost every single machine should have ball screw backlash compensation which we went over in the last video and then also ball screw pitch compensation and that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be doing pitch compensation. So we're going to be moving uh, in one inch increments all the way down the ball screw using this gauge to test the accuracy of our absolute positioning of our machine. So let's set up the cameras and uh, we'll go through uh, a calibration. Okay, we have our ladder gauge uh, in the machine and you can see the stair steps and it's 18 inches long, there's 18 individual steps. And then the center of each step is where the precision ground uh, surface is. So to use this device properly, uh, you have to set it on your table. And then I just put uh, two little tiny magnets on the table just to make sure that it doesn't move uh, during the calibration. And then you want to sweep the side of it first and make sure that it is uh, running parallel to the axis you're calibrating. Just like you want to square up a vise, or like we did our straightness tests, you want to make sure that this is absolutely straight on this table before you go and do this. Because remember, this is going to affect the total accuracy of your machine. If you get this wrong, uh, all the parts of your machine are going to have the same amount of error in them. So now that we've got it running straight, then we'll just rotate the indicator 90 degrees so that we can read the little squares and then we will move the uh, x-axis one inch down and then measure the error on the dial indicator. So I'll set the camera up on the screen of the machine so you can see the uh, axis location and I'll set the GoPro up on the dial indicator face and uh, we'll see what kind of accuracy we got. So I've got the main camera looking at our current axis position. And I've got the GoPro looking at our, our test indicator. Right now we're just a little bit below zero. So what we'll do then is we need to lift Z up a little bit. And then we're going to jog uh, X over. And then once we clear the step, We'll bring Z back down uh, to where it was before, which was 8 inches. And now we'll continue to jog X to the next uh, whole inch. And we don't want to overshoot because we don't want to account for backlash in our measurements. So we always want to keep going the same direction. It's very important we don't overshoot. If you overshoot, you got to back up again and come at it one more time. Okay, so there's our next inch increment, so now we'll look at our dial indicator. And our dial indicator is in the exact same spot as it was before. So we asked for one inch of movement and we got pretty much exactly one inch of movement, which is good. So I'm not going to go through all the steps, it's just, you know, more repeat. Uh, let's just raise Z up one more time. And then now, We'll, we'll jog a couple of inches down and we'll, we'll see what it looks like, you know, a couple inches down the road. We'll go to three. How's that? Okay. So now we'll bring our Z back down again to eight inches. 
you can you can write a program to do this as well, and that that's the more beneficial way to do it. Uh, it's, it's not as tedious, and it takes less time if you write a program. Again, you don't want to overshoot. We don't want to introduce backlash into our position calibration. Okay. So now looking at the dial indicator again, we are exactly where we want to be. Uh, so I've already done this calibration last year uh, typically, I, once a year, I'll try to recalibrate and just make sure that nothing shifted or moved. So this is how you can apply uh, ball, screw co ball screw compensation, pitch compensation, uh, to your controller. Uh, you'll have to enter this data into the pitch table, and uh, then you can get more accurate parts by not having as much positional error. So that's going to wrap up our machine alignment uh, calibration and maintenance series. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I hope you found it uh, helpful and informational. If you've had any questions during this series, again, uh, I'm always willing to help you out a little bit. If you want to send me an email or comment in the video below. You can see with uh, mostly basic tools, the only really expensive tool here uh, is the step gauge for the ball screw compensation. Uh, the square you can get, the, the granite square, uh, you can get a you know one ten thousandths of an inch accurate square for you know five hundred to a thousand dollars depending on the size of it and, and who you order it from. Um, the test indicator you know a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks for a really accurate one. Uh, but other than that you really don't need much more and you can align your machine and get really good tolerances and accuracies. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of elbow grease. So that's going to finish up uh, my yearly maintenance for my machine. So all we got to do is throw the weight covers back on and we'll be ready to make some more chips and have confidence that our machine is running true and accurate. So thanks for watching. I know it was a long haul. It was a lot of work getting this machine aligned. Kind of shared the steps with you and uh, we'll see you on the next set of videos.